Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. Today I'm going to estimate pi using a giant circle of Rubik's Cubes. So today is Pi Day, March 14th, or 3-14, which corresponds to 3.14, the first three digits of Pi, which is a really important number in mathematics, which goes on forever. It starts off 3.1415926 and just keeps on going. I've actually memorized the first 130 digits of Pi. You can click in the description to see the video of me reciting it. So basically, Pi is the ratio between the circumference of a circle, so the distance all the way around it like this, and the diameter of a circle, so the distance across it like this. So if you measure around it and you measure across it, you divide the circumference by the diameter, you get pi, or 3.1415, on and on and on. And a common challenge on pi day is to calculate those first few digits of pi with as much accuracy as possible, and a common way to do that is to make a big circle, measure around it, and measure across it, and divide those two numbers. So I actually did this last year using Rubik's Cubes. So I got a bunch of cubes that were the same size, put them around in a big circle, counted out how many there were, and then measured the distance across it in Rubik's Cubes, and then I divided those two numbers and got a pretty good approximation of pi. So this year I'm gonna be doing the same thing, but I'm gonna be using a lot more cubes. So last year I had around 50 cubes, this year I'm gonna be doing around 150. So to start off, I've marked out the center of our circle back here, and what we're gonna do is make a straight line of 50 Rubik's Cubes all the way across, and that will act as our diameter. All right, so now that we got the 50 cube diameter of our circle here, we gotta mark out where the circle is actually gonna be. So I'm gonna attach this string to the center right here, pull it out to the edge of the circle, and then just mark out with this little rock here exactly the outline of the circle, just like this. All right, and now that I got the outline of a circle, I'm gonna actually start building it out of Rubik's Cubes. All right, so I've now made it about halfway around the circle, but I've run into a little bit of a problem. I don't actually have enough Rubik's Cubes to make it all the way around the circle in one go. So what I'm actually gonna do is mark off the ends where the Rubik's Cubes stop, count how many I have right now, and then keep going around the other half of the circle, and then maybe with some video magic later on, I can merge the two together. All right, so I just went around the entire circle and counted, and we have exactly 80 cubes halfway around the circle. So now what we're gonna do is pick up some cubes, go around to the other side, and start building the other half of the circle. All right, so I made it around the other half of the circle in 79 additional cubes. That's 159 total cubes, but there is still a little bit of a gap here between the last cube and the mark that I made initially. So I think we need about another third of a cube. So I do have a floppy cube right here, which is a third of a cube, appropriately in the shape of a circle. I'll put that right here to finish off the circle. And now we have 159 and a third cubes all the way around the circle with a diameter of 50 cubes across. So it's time to get out your calculators. We can start off with 159 and a third, which is the distance all the way around the circle, the circumference. We divide that by 50, which is the diameter across the circle, and we get 3.186, or basically 3.19. So that is pretty far from the actual value of pi. But I'm pretty sure this half of the circle is actually drawn a lot more accurately than the back half of the circle. It was just really hard to get an accurate drawing on the ground using the flexible string that I was using. So if you take the number of cubes on this half of the circle, which was almost exactly 79, you multiply that by two, we get a total of 158 all the way around the circle. Divide that again by 50 we get a little bit of a better number of 3.16. So of course that's much closer to 3.1415, just 0.02 away from the actual true value of pi. So that's not a bad estimation I'd say, using the imprecise method of just counting Rubik's cubes, but I would have liked it to have been a little bit closer. Now we still have a little bit of a problem here. We've put Rubik's cubes around 100% of the circle, but it only looks like we put it around 50% because of course I don't have quite enough cubes. But with the magic of video editing, I think I can fix that. There we go. So that was my approximation of pi for pi day this year using only Rubik's cubes. It wasn't quite as close to the real value as I would have hoped, but it was still a pretty good effort and it does still look pretty cool having this many cubes in a circle around me, even though I don't actually have that many. Anyway, I'll definitely be trying again, maybe next year to get an even better approximation than this one. Maybe I'll even be using more cubes. I think the biggest problems were the inaccuracies of drawing the circle, so I'll definitely get a better string that just kind of stays tight and stays at a constant distance so I make sure that the diameter is perfectly straight all the way around the circle. That'll make it a lot more accurate. And also getting cubes that are all the exact same size would probably help a little bit too. So maybe I can just get a bunch of cubes that are exactly the same for really cheap and make a big circle out of that. That would be really cool. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video or maybe learned something from it, and I hope you guys like my epic circle of Rubik's Cubes. I'll see you guys next time.